Hello and welcome to the Capitol Report on NTD Television. I'm Steve Lance. Unprecedented in peacetime, fighter jets shot down four objects in nine days over North American airspace. NTD's Iris Tao brings us the latest on the White House's response to the Chinese spy balloon and the latest UFOs. Questions are mounting after U.S. jets grounded three more unidentified objects in three days over North America, all happening just days after the U.S. destroyed a Chinese spy balloon. And first, for those who are wondering, the White House says... There is no, again, no indication of aliens or extraterrestrial activity with these recent takedowns. But according to the White House, the U.S. military has yet to find out where the later objects came from and what they were doing. These are just happened over the last few days and we haven't found the debris, but we're going to do everything we can to find them and that will tell us a lot. After the Chinese balloon, U.S. just took down one object over Alaska on Friday, one over Canada on Saturday, and another one over Lake Huron on Sunday. The White House says it's not ruling out the possibility that they're also for spying, adding... These objects uh, could have and, uh, and likely did at some point in their path uh, transit over you know, potential military sites of ours or sensitive sites. Meanwhile, the Biden administration is being pressed on why we're seeing and shooting down so many so-called objects all of a sudden. National Security Spokesperson John Kirby says part of it is just that the U.S. military is now looking more closely. And if you set the parameters in such a way that to look for a certain something, it's more likely that you're going to find a certain something. The White House also denies that it's political pressure that's prompting Biden to order more of such shootdowns after the Chinese spy balloon incident. This, as the administration is facing criticism from even some Democrats. I have real concerns about why the uh, administration is not being more forthcoming with everything that it knows. Meanwhile, more on the Chinese spy balloon. Kirby says it differed from the newer ones as the U.S. knew exactly what the balloon was doing. They claimed it was a weather balloon. We know it's not. Kirby also rejects China's latest claim that the U.S. has flown balloons into Chinese airspace. There is no U.S. surveillance aircraft in Chinese airspace. Oh. Lawmakers are expected to again get classified briefings on China this week. And White House says some additional briefings on the objects could already be underway as we speak. Reporting from the White House, Iris Tao, NTD News. We're happy to have our next guest, retired U.S. Army Commander Lieutenant Colonel Darren Gobb, who also flew Black Hawk helicopters in multiple combat missions. He's also the co-founder of Restore Liberty. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Darren Gobb, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me on again. Colonel, I just have to get your thoughts on the multiple UFOs that have been taken down thus far. I believe it's three now on top of the Chinese spy balloon, which we knew what that was. Are we looking at possible extraterrestrial craft or more likely to be something from our adversaries, much like the initial Chinese spy balloon? Well, I think uh, what we need to focus our attention on is the initial Chinese spy balloon. And what China's frankly been doing to us for decades is is spying on us and air, land, sea, commerce, universities, and, and you name it. They've been there for a long time watching what we do. This is just another way of them doing that. And I think we need to stay away from the conversation about you know aliens and UFOs and all that and stick to what I would call something a little closer to reality. Uh, the, these are man-made objects. They have a purpose whose purpose we're still working on finding out. We're also still confirming that they all came from China. But in the end, whether it's all four that we know of came from China or even just the one, the, the message is pretty clear across the world about uh, we're, we're not going to worry about our borders too much, land, sea, or air anymore, it seems like. And at least we're finally taking some action against the things that we do see. Uh, but I, I don't think this is going to end anytime soon. I honestly think it's more like a, a probing of our perimeter and, and testing our response than anything else. You bring up an excellent point, uh, Colonel. We certainly don't want to take our eye off the prize, if you will, when it comes to the Chinese Communist Party and, and what they have initiated here. I want to ask you about the payload on the uh, Chinese craft there. There's, you know, military saying that it was three school buses uh, in, in size, which is why they waited for it to cross the continental U.S. before shooting it down over the ocean. In your opinion, you're in Montana where it flew over initially. Does this justify not taking it down uh, sooner? I don't think so at all. If your risk, risk I guess, uh, calculation is 
that it could hit something on the ground, then you should have taken it, uh, taken it down over the ocean or in a, in a location where it never had a chance of doing either of the above, spying on us or impacting the ground uh, where we live. Frankly, the fact that this thing wasn't shot down over the Aleutian Islands or even west of there is still a shock to me. And any explanation that I've heard for why, I don't buy it. I just think it needed to be done no matter what. And we needed to guard our borders and send that message more than anything else, regardless of what the payload was on the balloon anyways. And there's a lot of things that could have been on there. Uh, none of that matters. At, at this point, we can ex we can find it and exploit it the best we can, but it never should have been across our country in the first place. You know, as a retired U.S. Army lieutenant colonel who flew Black Hawk helicopters, we've had a few press conferences. We've heard from some uh, commanders in the military, NORAD, last night. Um, they're deferring questions to the intelligence community. It seems like there's a little bit of back and forth going here. Are you satisfied with what you have heard up until this point? I'm not. There is a lot of transparency that should be exercised here, and it's just not there. And I think the Americans are owed it. I think the Americans can handle it, whatever that truth may be. Uh, I've been inside NORAD before. I know how that area works. I know the things that we have to guard and the things that we shouldn't guard. But I think in this particular case, the first thing we need to see, frankly, is the president standing out in front of the American people and saying the truth. And even if the truth is we don't know, then so be it. That's okay, and that we're working on it. But uh, right now, the challenge we have with this administration and everything we've seen over the past couple years is the Americans simply don't trust anything coming out of this administration anyway, so why would they start trusting with everything they're getting told now? I can't blame them for that. Colonel, that was my next question for you, which is, you know, at what point does the president have to address this publicly? And, you know, to follow up to that, does uh, politically, does he run the risk of waiting too long and, uh, you know, it, it may look like he's disengaged to the general public? I think he's already waited too long, and I think the public already sees him as disengaged, and, he's, and there have been people coming out making statements about this across the national landscape that uh, are, are great people, but uh, he's the one that should be standing in front of folks. In fact, uh, up here in Montana, um, my friend Matt Rosendale, our, our congressman and my congressman, he was in the midst of getting introduced at a Lincoln Reagan Day dinner as a speaker, and he took a call from Fox News and answered those questions the best he could. Where was the president at that time? He was at the meeting with all the governors at a party, basically. And he could have stepped outside for five minutes and talked to somebody and let the American people know what was going on the best he could from where he's sitting. And again, that could be that we don't know, but it's time to communicate and be clear. Right now, everybody's guessing. Retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Darren Gobb, thank you for joining us. No, thanks, Stephen. Have a great night. Americans are more dissatisfied with immigration now than any time over the past decade. It's according to a new Gallup poll. This is the Biden administration says its new immigration policies are working with fewer illegal encounters last month than any month over the past year. And today's Melina Weiskup has the details. While illegal immigration still lingers at record high levels, there has been a sharp drop during the first month of this year. Customs and Border Protections reports that there were just over 156,000 encounters for the month of January, which is a 40% drop from December. But while this is a drop during the Biden administration, here's more context for this new data. Prior to the Biden administration, we haven't seen that many apprehensions in a month since May 2019, and that itself was an aberration in apprehension figures. January is generally the month of the year when the fewest migrants enter the country illegally. The Biden administration says last month's decline is thanks to its new expanded humanitarian parole policy. Customs and Border Protection writing in a statement, the significant decrease in Border Patrol encounters is indicative of the successes of the measures announced by the administration. The policy in January granted more than 11,000 Cubans, Haitians, Nicaraguans, and Venezuelans legal entry and work authorization. Despite the administration's efforts, Americans are increasingly discontent with its immigration policies. A Gallup poll with input from Republicans, Democrats, and independents reveals 63% of people are dissatisfied. Of that group, 64% want immigration decreased and 8% want it increased.
So some lawmakers are now proposing moving separate bills in parallel, one that would address border security and another that would address immigration reform. We have asked a couple of lawmakers about this specifically. Here's a few examples of what they've told me. Border security first. Well, the, the amount of money we have spent on the border gone through the roof. Immigration reform, nothing. So if my colleagues say we want to do them both together, I'm interested in that deal. Is look at where the money's going. This has turned into a multi-billion dollar operation within the United States, many of it fraudulent in the sense that uh, much of it went to no-bid no contracts to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars to political donors. But even just passing border security bills is proving challenging for the slim Republican majority in the House. They were originally supposed to pass the Border Safety and Security Act as one of their first bills, which would have allowed the DHS to turn away illegal crossers in order to gain what's referred to as operational control of the border. But this bill met with pushback from at least one Republican in the House, one moderate Republican, Representative Gonzalez. Now leadership in the House says they're working on a broader border security package. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Melina Weiskup, NTD News. A new way to spread Chinese propaganda about the U.S. A research firm has identified deep fake video clips featuring artificial intelligence generated newscasters and their messages align with the CCP. On first glance, these look like news anchors, but they are not real people. They're deep fake avatars made with artificial intelligence. It's unclear who is behind this, but last year pro CCP bot accounts sent them out over Twitter and Facebook. But this is the first time we've seen footage of an entirely fictitious fake person used in a politically motivated influence operation. This particular set of videos was promoted by an operation that we call Spamouflage, which we, we've been tracking since at least 2019. Um, and routinely amplifies narratives that align with Beijing's strategic interests. The research from Grafica issued a report on this broader campaign. It says in part, quote, more videos portrayed the U.S. in a negative light than focused on any other theme. These fake news anchors were made with technology from British AI company Synthesia. This technology is spreading rapidly around the world. China's state media has even created a whole team of AI news anchors. The proliferation of deep fake videos makes it dramatically harder to combat disinformation. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com.